Uh, next, we have some uh, important theorems on this uh, basis, uh, the concept of basis. Uh, let V be a vector space uh, uh, which is spanned by a finite set of vectors, uh, beta 1, beta 2, etc., beta n. Then, the, then any linearly independent uh, vectors in V is finite and contains no more than m elements. That means once a, uh, once a set of elements spans V, then we need not worry about the uh, basis elements you can but you can get the base elements from that set itself that's the idea here so we will prove that if uh, beta 1 beta 2 beta m uh, spans v then you can say that if, uh, more than m elements a set with more than m elements uh, should be always uh, linearly dependent in order to prove that we consider uh, alpha 1 alpha 2 etc uh, alpha m is a uh, n elements which is more uh, in this n is strictly greater than m so we will show that this alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha n is linearly uh, dependent okay so uh, this is the notation we have used in this book uh, for a finite sum i is equal to 1 this is actually uh, a uh, 1 1 a 1 j uh, beta uh, 1 plus a 2 j uh, beta 2 plus etc a uh, m j beta m this is the uh, expression here so uh, alpha 1 we have uh, this a 1 1 beta 1 plus a 2 uh, a 2 1 beta 2 plus etc for alpha 2 we have uh, a 1 2 beta 1 a 2 2 beta 2 and so on so uh, we need to prove that this alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha n, uh, are linearly independent in order to prove the linear independence, you will write C1 alpha 1 plus etc. Uh, C n alpha n, whenever this equal to 0, uh, implies each C i equal to 0. This is the definition of uh, linearly uh, independent elements. Okay, So, we will prove that this does not hold uh, in, in case of this alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha n. That means whenever we assume this uh, uh, C1 alpha 1 plus etc. Cn alpha n equal to 0, we can uh, choose uh, Cis in such a way that this equal to non-zero Cis in such a way that this expression is equal to 0. That means this never happens. So, first you write this uh, linear combination x1 alpha 1 plus etc. x n alpha n. Uh, that can be written as summation j equal to 1 to n xj alpha j. That is same as summation j equal to 1 to n uh, xj and we will substitute for this alpha j. Alpha j is nothing but the summation i equal to 1 to m uh, a i j beta i. Uh, by uh, simplifying this, you will get this is summation i equal to 1 to m, a summation j equal to 1 to n a i j x j. That is always a finite quantity. It is a scalar. Uh, comes from that uh, f. So, this times the scalar times uh, beta i. But we, if you uh, consider this uh, expression uh, for different values of i, you can get uh, a system of linear equations. Okay, whenever you write this uh, summation as uh, summation j equal to one to uh, n a i, consider this x j uh, equal to zero. Uh, then you can say that uh, for i equal to one, uh, we can get a system of linear equation a1 uh, 1 x1 plus uh, a1 2 x2 uh, plus etc a1 n xn equal to 0 for i equal to 2 a to 1 x1 plus a 2 2 x2 plus etc a 2 n xn equal to 0 and so on. So, once you consider this this uh, uh, equation, this can be uh, identified as a, a system of linear equation, homogeneous linear equation. But in, in, in this case, this is i of i equal to 1 uh, from 1 equal 1 to etc. all the way up to uh, m. Okay. So, here the number of equations uh, is uh, m and number of unknown is n. That means the number of unknown is greater than number of equations. So, this homogeneous system uh, should have uh, infinitely many solutions. So, we can easily find, uh, easily get a, a non-zero solution, non-zero, uh, non-trivial solution. That means not all these x i's are zero. 
for this system of linear equation. Okay, so uh, this shows that you can choose a i j uh, x j in such a way that this sum is zero for uh, for this uh, x i j s are not or zero. Okay, that means the system uh, uh, has a non-zero solution. Corresponding to that non-zero solution, uh, uh, you can get this x j such that this summation is zero. If this summation is zero, you can say that this is equal to zero for non-zero values of this x i s. So x i s are non-zero and the sum is equal to zero means this alpha one alpha two alpha n is linearly uh, dependent. Okay, so this shows that any set of uh, elements uh, alpha one alpha two alpha n where n is greater than m is always linearly dependent. And the corollary of that uh, statement is, or the theorem is, if V is finite dimensional vector space, then we can say that uh, it has a, a basis consisting of finite number of elements. Then any two uh, bases of V uh, have the same uh, finite number of uh, elements. Uh, because if you consider uh, two bases, um, uh, beta one, beta two, etc., beta time, and alpha one, alpha two, etc., uh, alpha n, uh, we need to prove that these two. Uh, Sets have same number of elements. Uh, that is always possible because of the previous theorem. Uh, if you consider uh, this is a spanning set because it is a uh, basis, so this spans. Okay, and uh, we can say that if uh, this is also basis, so uh, we can say that uh, this uh, this is linearly independent set. Okay, so since this is linearly independent and this spans, so this n is Always less than or equal to m. Okay. Uh, now you consider the other way around. If this is basis, then this spans, and this is linearly dependent. In that case, you can get the uh, inverse, uh, reverse uh, inequality. From these two, you can get m is equal to n. So this shows this corollary. Uh, if v is finite dimensional vector space, and then any two uh, bases of v uh, contains the same number of elements. So this would enable us to define uh, dimension of a uh, finite dimensional vector space. Okay, the dimension of a finite dimensional vector space is the number of elements of the basis cell, basis uh, basis set. Okay, because every basis contains a finite number of elements and uh, all are same. Okay, that same quantity is defined to be the uh, for a dimension of that vector space. Okay. Uh, the from uh, from the above two uh, results, you can conclude uh, two more uh, statements. If uh, let V be a finite dimensional vector space over uh, V uh, over F and let n is equal to dimension of V, then any set V which consists of more than n elements is linearly dependent. This is the consequence of the theorem. Uh, no subset of V which is con uh, which con uh, contains uh, fewer than n vectors can span V. Okay, this is the uh, consequence of the above uh, two results. So uh, these are the uh, consequences of the uh, theorem we have discussed uh, just now. Uh, next, we have a lemma. Uh, let S be a linearly independent uh, subset of a vector space V. Uh, suppose beta is a, a vector in V such uh, which is not in the subspace spanned by S. Okay, the subspace spanned by S is nothing but the set of all linear combination of elements of or vectors of S. Then the set of the set obtained by adjoining beta to S is linearly independent. Okay, so first you consider uh, an element beta uh, from outside the uh, linear combination of this elements of S. Then you can say that uh, alpha one, alpha two, alpha uh, along with this beta is a linearly independent set. For this, we uh, uh, assume alpha one, alpha two, alpha m uh, are the distinct vectors in S, and that. Uh, and, and and consider uh, this relation C1 times alpha 1 plus etc. Cm alpha 1 plus B beta is equal to 0. Then uh, beta equal to 0. Otherwise, what happened? Otherwise, beta would be the linear combination of alpha 1, alpha 2, etc. Alpha. Okay, but our assumption is beta is, up, beta is from the outside of the linear combinations. Okay, so uh, this uh, immediately implies uh, this one, beta is equal to this. So, we can say that this b is always zero. If b is uh, if b not equal to zero, uh, this immediately implies this condition. So we can say that uh, b is zero. If b is zero, then you can get uh, this term is zero. Then this is equal to zero. Since alpha one, alpha two, alpha m are linearly independent, 
then we can say that each c i equal to 0. Okay, whenever this combination is 0, then each of these coefficients are 0, then we can say that uh, this alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 1 along with beta is always linearly independent. Using this result, you can uh, find a, ba a basis for a, a finite dimensional vector space. Okay, so if W is a subspace of a finite dimensional vector space, we every linearly independent subset of W is finite and is a part of a basis. Okay, so if you have a, uh, a, su a subspace W, then take any any linearly independent subset of W, and we can say that this is a part of a basis of V. Okay, uh, that is because if you consider linearly independent set like this, you can consider the linear combination set of all linear combinations of this much elements, C K alpha K. If this is uh, this is all of this linear combination is all of V, we can say that uh, this is a basis for V as well. Uh, otherwise, what happened? If this is the case, we can say that this is subset but not equal. Okay, therefore uh, you can find an element. Uh, another element uh, beta 1 uh, belongs to V, but beta 1 does not belong to this set. Then you can extend this alpha 1, alpha 1, etc., alpha k, uh, alpha 1, etc., alpha k, and beta, beta 1. Okay, so this is linearly independent because beta 1 comes from the out of this uh, linear combinations. So you can say that this is linearly independent. Now consider the set of all linear combinations of these elements, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha k along with beta 1. If that is V, then we are done because that is the basis for uh, V. Otherwise, you can again extend the set to uh, uh, or along, uh, you can adjoin an, another element to this, uh, this set, then you can extend this. Then you can uh, uh, extend this uh, set as a, a linearly independent set uh, in V. Okay. So since V is finite dimensional, this would a uh, result to a basis for V. So this shows that there is a, a, any finite uh, set of uh, finite linearly independent set of uh, W is a part of basis. Okay, that is an interesting result. Uh, now how now we have if W is a proper subspace of finite dimensional vector space, then W is finite dimensional. Uh, th that means it's a, it's a proper subspace. Then you can say that uh, a, a, any linearly independent set of W can be extended to the uh, basis of uh, V, then obviously the dimension is always less than dimension of V. Uh, now we have two corollaries. Uh, in a finite dimensional vector space V, every non empty linearly independent set of a set of vectors is a part of uh, basis. Okay, uh, that is a, a, the argument uh, is same as uh, what we have discussed just now. Uh, another thing is another consequence is if A is an M by N matrix. And suppose that row vectors of A form a linear independent subset of uh, Fn, then A is invertible. Okay, uh, this is because uh, when you consider a matrix with uh, linearly independent uh, rows, then uh, this, these alpha, one, uh, if, if these are the uh, linearly independent uh, row vectors of A, then alpha one, alpha two, alpha n uh, is a uh, basis for Fn uh, because of the dimension of Fn is uh, n. So we can say that if we, if we choose uh, this epsilon i, this epsilon i is nothing but 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, etc., 0, 0, 0, 1. Those vectors, those row vectors can be expressed as a linear combination of uh, these uh, alpha j's. Each row of the identity matrix uh, can be written as, uh, if this is the case, 1, 0, etc., 0, uh, this is equal to uh, b uh, i that is 1, 1, alpha 1, b, 1, 2, alpha 2, etc., b, 1, n, alpha n, and the uh, uh, second vector 0, 1, 0, 0, 0 can be written as uh, b, uh, 2, 1, alpha 1, b, 2, 2, alpha 2, plus etc., b, 2, n, alpha n, and so on. So uh, from the left side, if you uh, translate this to the matrix form, you can write this is the identity matrix 1, 0, 0, etc., 0, 0, 1, 0, etc., 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 etc., 1. This is equal to, uh, this is nothing but B times A, A in terms of the uh, matrix entries, uh, uh, B11, B12, and the, uh, the elements of entries of the A are AIJ. 
So this shows that V A is equal to I, then this A is invertible. The uh, next result is very important. If W and W2 are finite dimensional subspaces of a vector space V, then uh, we have already uh, defined W1 plus W2, the sum of uh, two uh, subspaces. And in this case, we can say that the sum of uh, two subspaces, a dimension of the sum of two subspaces is again finite. And that follow this result, dimension of W1 plus W2 is equal to dimension of W1 plus dimension of W2 minus of this dimension of the intersection. So uh, we can say that whenever uh, two subspaces are finite dimensional, then its sum is also finite dimensional. And the dimensions of these, uh, sub these three subspaces, say W1, W2 and W1 plus W2 satisfies this relation. Uh, this completes uh, section uh, 2.3. Uh, as far as these three sections are concerned, uh, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, so you can omit the proof of all the results in these, these three sections and uh, try to solve the problems of this. So uh, the problem sessions are very important in these three sections. So next section onwards, uh, we need to uh, find out or understand all the proofs of uh, those sessions 2.4 uh, from 2.4 onwards.